All right, hello everybody. I'm gonna start it, start it up. <laughs> All right, so I'm giving a talk today on map tracing for millennials. So I kind of uh, thought that'd be an interesting title. So let me just explain a little bit more about what I'm talking about. So first part is map tracing. So the way I define that is, you know, you've, you're kind of like an armchair mapper. You trace over some sort of base layer. Usually it's satellite imagery. And if you're trying to do roads, it's usually a really tedious process with a lot of clicking and you just click, 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 click. And, you know, to me, it's really boring and just nuts. And, you know, for roads and buildings and stuff like that. So that may be because I'm a millennial and I just find things boring easily. And, you know, they get blamed and, you know, we get blamed for a lot of stuff. So not wanting to map trace is, you can add it to the list, but the, what the, the reality is that map tracing is boring, like for everybody. Like nobody, <laughs> I mean, I, I do sometimes, I guess, but sometimes, like the, the clicking is just dumb. So what I want to uh, talk about is some of the tools that I've worked on at Strava to uh, use our data to make map tracing have a little bit more context and uh, a little less painful. So. For those of you that don't know, Strava is an online network for athletes. So that's kind of what marketing says we should describe it as. But the general flow is you go out for a run or a ride, and you record it, then you upload it, we, you analyze it, speed, pace, whatever, and then you share it on Facebook and Twitter and with your friends and everything like that. So it's kind of a, it's an online network <laughs> uh, for athletes. But what's, what's relevant to what I do there as an engineer is, you know, people come to us with this bag of GPS points and this data, and we, we surprise and delight them with, you know, unicorns and rainbows and just make, a, make an experience on them. So, like, fundamentally to what Strava is, it's you give us GPS data and we give you this wonderful social experience and all this other stuff. So the GPS data is the important part probably most relevant to the people here. And we have a lot of GPS points. And uh, right now it's about 800 billion points. And we get uh, close to 5 million new activities and runs every week. So uh, it's quite an active data set. And it grows really fast. And uh, you know, here on the side is rides through Central Park, which you can see that everyone does the loop around the side. But if you look at runs there, the reservoir loop is really popular. So we have like this, uh, you know, this data set that once mapped and uh, put on a map is, uh, you know, really, really rich and can has a lot of information in it. So uh, we can use that. Uh, this is this is our data set, kind of like a coverage, you know, versus a heat map. Like it is like it has global coverage. This, this map, uh, coverage map, is from data from October. So there's one more summer or spring, I guess, in there to give even more coverage. Um, kind of interesting from this, I didn't really filter it, is there is like weird data from all over the place. And you'd be surprised that it's not all, not all the data that's uploaded to us is of high quality or make any sense at all. But once you do put it on a, uh, on a heat map, the patterns really do come out, like in the previous slide. So we, we use this data for a lot of things, you know, other than just, you know, for personal stuff, we use it to figure out, you know, top places to stop, you know, coffee shops, viewpoints, top routes. So if you're in a new city, where should you go? Uh, GPS error detection. You know, if you're not on a popular road, but you're near one, maybe your GPS is crappy. And we also, uh, we also sell it to cities for city planning. So anybody that's doing like bike routing and want to know, you know, usage patterns, uh, it's actually been going very well. So that's how we use the data. Um, how we use OSM, uh, we use it for routing. Uh, we have Strava routing. It's one of our many features. Uh, it's basically OSM routing over a Google map, which is you know, kind of something I'm not very happy about, but there's other battles to fight. Uh, but you know, as you know, some examples were given in previous talks of this sort of thing is, you know, if you route from point A to point B, you get this, you know, fun route. But if you overlay the heat map, you see that no one really rides on that road. Everyone that any rider in the city would just go 
right down the middle through the park. And so we've, uh, we've done edge weighting based off of runners or rides, number of rides and unique rides and all sorts of stuff to uh, you have a more uh, intuitive route for people. So that's, that's kind of our main, or like our biggest kind of heaviest usage of OSM is the base layer. And so the base layer. You know, the other stuff you know, that we use OSM for is just tiles and maps. So if you've used our mobile app, anything that's based, any map on Strata that's like a static map is OSM. Anything that's slippy is Google or Apple. And uh, so, yeah, so we have an interest in making OSM. Given these two use cases, we have a pretty big interest in making OSM better, specifically the routing use case. So anything that's, you know, not an OSM, we can't route over which doesn't make people happy. So, uh, so back to, so that's, like, that's what Strava does. So back to our, uh, the, the context of this talk is how can we make, how can we make uh, map tracing, you know, less boring, more context. And, uh, you know, and th there's also this kind of thing of, you know, people these days expect their tech to be smart. Like, you know, if I can look at it and kind of like know what it should do, like in a split second, why can't a computer do that? And while that's a big expectation to ask, like those problems are, you know, harder to solve in some cases than others, but there is a lot of work we can do. And I should just take a quick note is there's been a lot of talks on this like uh, general theme of helping map editors and having smarter tools and moving in this direction at this conference, which is good to see because, you know, that's, we need more of that. So context, context in mapping. Uh, there's there's a couple different ways of like why you would edit OpenStreetMap. So if you if you are if you're here and you like OpenStreetMap and stuff, you have that like intrinsic need to do it, but not completely really. Uh, at some point, you get bored and find other things to do. So you know, humanitarian OpenStreetMap does a great way of like motivating people to to map because it's about the you're helping other people. There's a real need there to do it. It's not just you know some random place. You know, then there's like quick fix tools out there where it's about the data. You know, these are, these are places that we've detected. It's easy for you to find. And they've, they've kind of given a reason that, of why you should edit those different areas. And below there, I have just like a list of these different, these different uh, quick fix tools. You know, some were talked about like Map Roulette and Two Fix. There was some talks earlier today. You know, we have our own routing errors thing, which is not quite as advanced as all those, but I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. So we do have our own routing errors thing. So if you go to the, the Strava routes where you can build a route, there's this little button in the bottom left-hand side where you can click it and drag a point on the map and make a note. So it's basically like OSM note or whatever. And you can imagine that how it's all hidden over there in the corner that nobody really clicks on that. And it's true that no one, that no one does, but it does result in a lot of a lot of reports. So while like percentage wise it's very low, there are a lot of people that are, you know, trying to trying to help Strava make their routing better and in, in you know in a way make OSM better. So there are a lot of people that are motivated to, you know, report errors and bug fix and stuff like that. So we take those reports and we put them on a map and it's just kind of a straightforward bunch bunch of markers and you can uh, open them up and see the reasoning. And uh, it's, it's been fairly successful. We've had about 8,000 reported errors and about 4,000 fixes. It's like a 50% fix rate. And it's not just me fixing them or anybody at Strava. There are a lot of fixed errors that, that I didn't do. I've, you know, the tool's kind of open so that you don't have to log in or anything like that just to have the barrier of entry be low. But you know, people are out there fixing the errors. So, Thank you to whoever's out there doing this. Uh, appreciate it. But there are, uh, it's, it's a far from perfect tool. You know, you get a lot of these like thing that is just, just like hard to figure out what people are talking about. They, you know, sometimes they write like two paragraphs of weird stuff on there and you're just like, you know, what, what like, it, it's, it's hard to figure out what's going on because it's, it's lacking a lot of, a lot of reporting. You know, and you know, one of the other things is our routing isn't necessarily up to date. Like our base map layer isn't isn't up to date, so it could have already been fixed. There's areas that have been reported, you know, three or four times in our tool, and so it's unfortunate in that way. 
so what I thought about was, you know, how can we make this more automated? You know, in this uh, future world, our tech should be smart. It should, we should just automatically figure out what you should do, uh, what's wrong, and how we can fix it. So the first thing is just auto-detecting bike errors. So what I did was, this is US only. I've, like, kind of in real time, as activities are uploaded, any bike ride in the United States gets uh, routed via OSRM, and I have this, like, divide and conquer way to match it to the route. And it uses the bike profile that you know, OSRM provides, but like more liberal. So it doesn't worry about, it just makes it more liberal to kind of ignore like poorly tagged areas and just focus purely on geometry disconnections. And uh, the, the errors on the website are updated weekly. And uh, it provides like a, a context for cyclists to, to really like, how much should I care? is kind of the, the question of, there's, there's so many places in OSM that need a little bit of love. You know, can we prioritize them in a way to give context? So, so this tool, in a week's worth of data, there was about 30,000 total errors of places where there wasn't map geometry where somebody rode their bike through it. And about 5,000 of those had 10 or more rides a week. So it's kind of like a manageable set of of things to fix and stuff. So what does that look like? You know, you just put it on a map and these are, these are the markers for the top 200. So it's kind of like all over the United States. So you can look at different areas and, you know, one, another piece of context is what's around me. You know, I, I live in Oakland and the mapping there has been very good. So there isn't a whole lot of like new geometry for me to add, but you know, this tool did find some pretty, pretty, uh, I guess, embarrassing errors in OSM, which uh, have been fixed. And uh, once you mark them as fixed, they turn green. So I couldn't help myself there. Uh, some of the errors that it'll detect is like cross through paths here. So uh, I don't know if you guys can see it very well, but on the left, there's like a road uh, with a path next to it. And on the right, there's like a, a bigger road and people cut through there all the time. So you see that the, you're unable to route through. And if you look at like our heat map data of all of our rides, you know, people are definitely riding there on a consistent basis. Uh, so you know, we should be able to put a, a route through there. Uh, other things, you know, this intersection here has 112 people go through a week, which is quite a lot, really. And if you look at the OSM data, it's pretty embarrassing little error there that should be connected. So, so like the f initial first runs, it found a lot of these like, wow, those are really easy to fix. I'm kind of anticipating that over a few months as these get fixed, the errors will become like harder or newer or, uh, I, I don't know, I, I kind of have this vibe that we should be able to fix all of these relatively quickly. Anyway, so this is one of those errors where, you know, it's, it's kind of embarrassing to have in, in our data set. So uh, here's kind of the info is, you know, you can go use it today, uh, maybe tomorrow at the hackathon. Uh, you know, kind of the next steps are, how do we make, I want to be able to make it user specific. So if you're a bike rider on Strava, you've done 200 rides, I want to be able to run all 200 of those rides through the thing and tell you, hey, it looks like you've ridden here 10 times and the data's wrong, can you help fix it? And so part of the, Part of what, to make that possible is having some sort of like real-time way to do that, but also having a way to, you know, create a feedback loop and get people motivated. Uh, one of the bigger errors uh, that you see, like sometimes it's those little ones that I showed you that are fairly easy to fix. Sometimes it's like, well, there's this huge trail network here and it's just not in OSM. So, you know, there's not a whole much you can do. Uh, those weird lines are just an artifact of the network, uh, the algorithm that uh, basically the idea is there's lots of trails here and they're not in OSM. And there's a lot of trails everywhere that aren't in OSM. But part of this tool is, you know, what are trails that people are riding right now or this week that aren't in OSM? Something that is an active, an active location that we can kind of prioritize these trails. Uh, you know, yeah. So the next, the next part of the step is once you find these like trails that are a little bit harder to fix is you know, the next step in the flow and the pipeline is how do you map it? So you end up and you go into ID and it looks like this. It's just 
aerial imagery. And if you look really close, you can see a trail in there, but it's, it's not very helpful. Uh, if you overlay it with our heat, our heat map layer, you can see that there's a clear, like really popular route there. And then with ID, you can sit there and, and trace it and do a, cars, a course outline of that. So our heat map layer is available to view. I think I have links later on. Uh, available to view and available for OSM tracing. So you can use it for this. But if you just trace it like this, like this is kind of one of my pet peeves is trails that are, are, are traced like this very coarsely. Because when you zoom in on an area and you're like, oh, what are the cool trails here? You automatically lose any faith in the data when it looks like this. So this has kind of been one of the things that I've been trying to improve is, you know, how do you, how do you go from like a coarse outline to that to something that actually represents reality? And when you look at the rendered map, it looks like what you'd expect a trail to look like, which is this windy, curvy path and less of, you know, jagged, sharp corners. All right, so here's the info on the heat map. Uh, I, I think I presented on this last year, so uh, there are presets for ID and JAWSM, and uh, about 550 people have used it over the last year, and tw uh, 22,000 chain sets. So it's been quite of a, you know, people, people are using this to add tails, and thank you, great. Uh, we're happy to provide that. Uh, one thing that I just want to mention here is that it is for OSM tracing only. So the heat map is not like open data. It's for OSM tracing. Uh, it's, it is what it is. And I just hope you guys consider the glass half full with that rule and respect it. Because I do get emails from time to time when someone says, hey, look at this cool thing I did with your heat map. And it raises alarm bells within the company. So please use it for OSM tracing only. Uh, the, yeah, the other thing is like, okay, well, what if we just take the heat map and we mask out everything that's in OSM? And so this, you know, I use uh, map sends vector tiles to make that happen. And you end up with the heat map, but places that aren't in, in the data set. And this is, you know, it's, it works. It's not really all that useful, unfortunately, but uh, it is kind of a cool way to, if you're panning around your neighborhood and looking for cut throughs to, just they immediately kind of pop out at you. Uh, the kind of the good thing is, is that there aren't really that many of those kind of missing cut throughs where you can just kind of pan around a few blocks and find anything to edit. You kind of have to look far and wide. So maybe that's a good thing. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about, so what I want to talk about now is the third step of kind of the process of, you know, you found the error that people is relevant to people. You've found the, you've managed to trace it in ID but it's still really coarse. And, you know, like I mentioned at the beginning, map tracing with clicking, 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 it's just not something, it just takes a lot of time, it's boring and whatever. So, uh, you know, kind of, uh, kind of complete that step. Uh, we have this tool called Slide, which makes that happen. And I, I presented it on this uh, last year, and it's gotten quite a bit of use, uh, but I just wanted to make more people aware of it and kind of how it fits into our thinking of, fixing and contributing back to OSM. But basically, it, it does that last step of matching it to the trails, or matching it to the trails or the heat map data. And uh, yeah. So I have some like demos at the end where I'll show it to you. So some of the, you know, the technical details. Uh, if you really want the technical details, you can go to the web page or view my talk from last year, which is also on the thing. But basically, it slides your course estimate, which in this case is the black line, to your heat map data, which is the red and blue kind of thick one. And it does it through an iterative mathematical optimization algorithm. And uh, it's, it's fairly good. Uh, I recommend you verify results like everyone should when doing automated, semi-automated edits. But it does very well to speed up that clickety click, click, click part of map tracing. So here's the info. Um, yeah, it's all linked around. Uh, the code is open source for Slide. That's one thing that has changed since last year is the code got open sourced. Unfortunately, it still relies on the Strava data set, which isn't completely open. So you know, I guess if you're interested in how the algorithm works, that's one option. But uh, you know, it, it's, it has various uh, limited uses open source. Uh, 
you know, here's some of the technical details. You know, it's a server side thing. You run it in the browser. It's an ID plugin, so it all works. I'll have some demos later on that. And then, uh, you know, I've also used it for other data sets like Tiger, which is kind of a hack, really, but it just shows that it is useful for other things. Anyway, so this is the flow I kind of wanted to talk about is, you know, we, we want to have, find a, have a way to find errors that are relevant to us at Strava and to our community that we can potentially uh, leverage for OSM, you know, verify it with the heat maps, speed up the map tracing with slide, you know, verify it with people's eyes, and then save it to OSM. So the tools that, so, you know, with this flow in mind, we have tools to make all those pieces happen. So anyway, thank you. Uh, I don't know, how much time do I have? Five, oh, five minutes. Okay, great. Uh, so let me let me try to do a demo of kind of how this flow works. So this is yeah, this is kind of the uh, the area that I showed before with the misconnected. So you can just click on the thing. It loads in the sections of people's rides from last week where it wasn't able to route through there, which you know, I think provides like a really good set of contacts context. You can edit it in ID immediately just you know connect it up and and it loads in and save and maybe maybe correct some other stuff around that's up to you uh this this error is actually i was looking at it closely it's it's kind of a bit more complicated but again it loads in you know 13 rides last week not super not super popular but that's real people riding this section that we can't route through. So you can edit an ID. And I think if you look really closely, it should probably be some sort of service road or something like that with maybe a gate over here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, service road parking aisle. This, this is an example of where a trail is missing. Uh, you get this all over the place. Like this is kind of the, the major use case is, yeah, trails are missing. Duh, I get it, but where should I start mapping? And so this, the tool is designed to help you answer that question. So one way to do that, I guess let's see if it loads. Uh, anyway, uh, Hold on, bear with me for just a second. Boundaries, land use. Yeah, anyway, you can trace these trails into OSM in a coarse fashion and then slide it. Because I had more faith in my company provided internet, but I guess not. Anyway. So I guess that's kind of an overview of what I wanted to talk about is just kind of how we at Strava are trying to make use of OSM for our routing tools and how at the same time we're trying to give back and make OSM better at the same time. And to do it not just in kind of a like blah, here's you know some data, but to build tools that are smart and help this happen in kind of a efficient way. And you know, it's exciting to see the community like doing the same thing. There's been a lot of talks about also um, also building smarter tools to make editing faster, which is fun to see. All right, thank you. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah. Hey, Paul, I was uh, actually looking at the routing errors earlier today, and um, I found some where it looked like there was a motorway or a trunk, and um, it, is that a, an issue? Does the routing engine just uh, ignore like a, a motorway or trunk road? in OSM? Yeah, for, for, for this tool, I'm using OSRM. And so there are, there is, there is probably something in there that says you can't route on track. I've gone through several iterations of the profile to this, and that's probably one that still needs to be ironed out is, you know, people do ride on highways at times. And for this tool, I kind of, this tool is mostly focused on the geometry, which is mostly relevant to us. And so we, uh, Yes, yeah, so mostly focused on the geometry, not so much like the nuances of tagging. Yeah. 
with uh, Slide, you sort of rely on having a pre-drawn course line, as you explained. Did you investigate any algorithms that created these lines from scratch, just from the uh, just from the data that you've shown, rather than like fitting the drawn curve to the actual curve? Yeah, so the question is, do we have any algorithms to just generate trails or generate lines from the raw data versus like refining it? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, yeah, the answer is yes, we do. We have done, we have generated trail networks for parks and stuff. The, yeah, the bigger challenge is they're, they're not, they don't quite have the same like edit flow. They're more like automated, like import kind of like tone to them versus like with slide what I like what I wanted to get out of it is like you know you still have a person doing it they just do it faster while well, automated stuff and that's that is something that we're working on at Strava the question is what to do with them yeah hi uh, are you going to add average speed data information uh, if the question is am I going to add average speed data I can yeah, I mean, in what context? Average speed data is very important for uh, routing improvement. So uh, currently, uh, OSM data is missing this information totally. Uh, and professional data has it uh, originally. So if we have uh, average speed for uh, roads, the routing will be greatly improved in navigation applications. Okay. Yeah, we can add that. All right, thank you.